Well, look who's back. Took a break for a few months and the world's in a global pandemic. Now, I hope you guys are all doing well. And um, we've got a uh, 16 Corvette Z51 right here for you guys. Came back with a hard mount wing through the bumper. I'm sorry, with a hard mount wing. Uh, today, we've already done the fuel system in this thing. We've done the minor repairs with the Z06 torque tube. So now we are going to put a supercharger on this thing. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, a few months, uh, maybe a year ago, put an engine in it. So did uh, forged internals. So uh, yeah, let's get this thing started. Welcome to the shop. The main focus of today is getting an ANA supercharger installed. So we're going to make some room for it. We got a lot to do. There's the intercooler. So that's going to mount underneath the front. It's actually got a scoop built into it, which is nice. All right, getting somewhere. So uh, got the supercharger installed. Let's go down there and take a peek. There you go. YSI. Now I still have to run the oil lines. Got the Haltech air filter in. I ended up cutting just the end of the filter off. Unfortunately, the way this pipe kicks out, I had to elongate one side, um, but it does work. So it'd be nice to come up with a panel to cover up this air gap here. That way it's getting all just cold air. It's a massive filter, way bigger than the one the kit comes with. Uh, the one the kit comes with basically bolts up to a factory airbox. So you're going with all this craziness. I don't know why you'd want a factory airbox. Um, also installed the MSD two-step. Now they have a lot of excess wiring on this. Um, I just secured it to this handle right now just so it's accessible. Um, may change up where that sits at a later date. But um, one thing I didn't like about the MSD kit is it had huge lengths of pigtails that were unwrapped. So I actually tucked them under and then secured it to the harness with a bunch of ties to kind of clean it up. Uh, right now it's sitting up kind of a little high, um, but it's actually not bad. It almost mimics the uh, driver's side. So here's the driver's side. So I ended up having to start with the fuel rail and tying it away from the belt because if that belt breaks free, I don't want it to slap the fuel line and have a fuel leak. So I tied that in real tight with the harness in here. Get a little bit more light. See that silver covered up harness right there? So I secured it to that, and that's pretty much where this uh, craziness in this corner started. Um, so we got a Mighty Mouse catch can. Um, cool thing about that is, Obviously, it has a massive vent here. It has a breather on it. However, there is a seal in the breather, so you can still run a MAF setup with it. It's uh, in the event of excess crankcase vent. Um, it'll actually pop the seal, kind of like a blow-off valve, and it'll vent manually through this filter. So, um, that's all good and set up. I don't like that this uh, fitting is a straight fitting. I would really like either a 45 or even a 90. That way I could just run it straight in. Um, we got the check valve in line. I still need to come up with some hose clamps. Um, this, this barb fitting is actually really strong. You can't even remove it, but I'd like to at least have one on this. Um, as well as this bottom line here. That's running all the way to the blow-off valve. So you want to have full vacuum and boost on that one. And then everything past the check valve is uh, PCV stuff. So. The kit basically wants you to run it to the stock PCV, but the Mighty Mouse doesn't want you to do that. So we had uh, the plug came in the kit. I don't know if you can see it. So hopefully that's enough to hold it. I got two zip ties holding it down for right now. Um, bracket on this Mighty Mouse can is really nice. Um, bolts to the frame, it's real secure. Um, you know, it's kind of in the way of my fuel pressure regulator, but we got just enough gap. I could maybe clock this if I move this regulator, but um, that fuel line is pretty much, it's not kinked, it's its pretty much at the max of its twisting abilities, and it's, um, you know, it's away from the belt. So if this belt blows, 
I mean, it's going to take out a bunch of other crap in the way. Uh, one hard thing with the kit is I had to relocate the ABS block. It used to sit six inches forward and maybe two inches up. So that was kind of difficult. You got, it comes with a new bracket. Um, you have to basically bend the lines in order to fit. So yeah, obviously this corner is going to be real busy, but... Overall, as a package, it's um, you know as nice as I can get it. I still have to run the I got a, a T in line with the blow off valve. I need to run that under the filter here, and I need to tie into the um, boost switch for the uh, secondary fuel pump to kick on. It kicks on at five psi. I actually wrote it on the switch, um, and that's plugged in already wired up to the relay that's sitting in the back of the trunk. It's got um two four innovations pumps and uh should be enough to flow like 1200 horse so um there's the fuel regulator that comes with the kit um and it's obviously got a return returns over here i noticed that the uh the this is like a nylon cord i put some protection on it because it had a few strands that were kind of fraying and then i tied this other one up a little closer to the firewall um then let's see and here we've got a uh, map four bar map sensor. This is an electronic for the gauge that's in the dash. It doesn't actually read it from the computer um, So I got to check the part number on that map sensor right there to see if it can support boost So we'll check that out um, Also put some sleeves on the plug wires to keep the heat down. So in the kit um, It may work on a stock intake but you notice there's a port here, right on top. Um, it actually comes with a threaded fitting that will basically just bolt right into that. But there ain't no way in hell I'm going to be able to do it on this intake manifold. I mean, it's just too tight in there. I mean, there's, there's definitely just no room. So, uh, one thing I'm thinking about is maybe pulling the intake off. And drilling and tapping that block in the side somewhere over there and that will allow me to kind of get this guy in there like that and that will be my supply so there is the intercooler here's the drain for the mighty mouse I didn't cut this cord because it's gonna come in handy when you're actually trying to drain it you basically, when that thing's full, it's got a window, um, you loosen it, and this whole line will drain the excess oil, and then basically tighten it, just how you would a bolt, just hand tight. It's got a rubber gasket in there, so that's all done. So I left it long, just so you can uh, direct it into an oil pan. Uh, and now we got the drain. So one member on the forums, Mounted his uh, his drain in the oil pan right here. So if I do that, I'm gonna have to pull off the oil cooler, which I'm not really I'm not really digging right now. Um, however, the length of this hose is really long. I've got it kind of curled around right there, and uh, you know it's kind of excessive. So maybe they want me to install this on the passenger side. If they do, that looks like a much more acceptable routing got an opening all the way in the front here it didn't have any mention of z51 equipped cars in the instruction on their website it's the only one that i saw they don't have anything for a ysi basically they have one for an oil self-contained so um you may notice you may notice that cooler right there see those lines they're all bolted into that cooler that is actually the transmission cooler and that used to live right here where the intercooler lives. You can kind of see how high up it goes. The intercooler, it's got a little scoop on it right there. So I was able to mount the trans cooler pretty much right on the condenser. And um, happy how it turned out. I used the factory bracket. I cut off the stock mounting bracket so it would actually fit inside the radiator area. And uh, that's definitely going to work. I had to tweak these lines a little bit. So got that all sorted out. They kind of exit back into the fender over in that corner. <sighs> There's Bob holding the steering wheel. So, yep, that's pretty much where we're at right now.
Yeah, can't wait to fire this thing up. And to kind of go back on what I ended up doing, there is the oil return. Definitely did not want to mess with this side. But um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much all, all I wanted to show you guys. So she's ready to roll. All right, so update. Um, looks pretty similar to what you may recall. Um, Installed an alky methanol kit, so ended up pulling the washer tank out and um, converting it over. You had to delete the washer motor, um, but have that all wrapped in insulation. I ended up getting the clamps on the pressure side of this, um, you know, on my vacuum pressure lines. Every uh, vacuum or a pressure line has a zip tie holding it on if it's uh, not seeing uh, direct boost um, or if the barb was kind of weak even on this uh, breather line here <clears throat> got that uh, from coming off and let's see so we had to do a bunch of wiring for the alki kit it has a map sensor in there um, and I believe at like 5 psi uh, the kit will activate so, or actually it's about four is what I recall from the instructions. So this corner is a little busy now. Um, here is the methanol line. Ran all underneath there. And then underneath, and then it actually goes into the charge piping right here on both sides. So we did end up changing that map sensor. That's an LS9 map sensor. It's a direct fit, plug and play. It's a three bar. Um, so we got that in. We had to get a map, I mean a barrow breakout. Getting them out of pressurized um, hot air uh, definitely can allow you to use that for a tuning advantage. So you may notice the fuel, I mean uh, the oil feed line. I did end up pulling the intake manifold as well as the injector, the pump, the high pressure stuff. And uh, basically was able to put this on a bench and drill it out, tap it for 8th inch MPT in the side. I ended up wiring in the uh, ground signal to the two-step. Kind of tied it up a little bit under the hood. I think it's looking pretty decent right now. But um, here, let me show you some of the other difficult things we ended up doing. All right, so inside the cabin here, it's all back together. Had the whole dash apart, basically all the beauty panels and uh, covers to do the wiring. So from the driver's seat, uh, when you're using the meth, I've got the LED indicator right there. I believe it lights up green when you actually have pressure. So I'm assuming there's a pressure sensor inside the uh, pump. Um, if you turn the screen down. I ended up making a new bracket. He actually brought me a gauge as well as meth controller bracket. Um, however, it didn't fit with the end gauge because the end gauge is just extremely massive. The backside is a normal gauge pod, but it's just really tall. So I had to bring the whole gauge down. So it does cover the top of the, the Alki kit a little bit. Um, covers the lettering for on, but it does work. Um, then you can still access the uh, the switches on the bottom. You can turn it on. You can set it up to however you need. Um, let's turn it on real quick. All right, so now we got the methanol pump. We're going to test it. We got it at about three. 
This has a test button here. And you can actually hear it run. Here's where the LED is. So from the driver's view. And then when you don't want to look at some gauges, just hit the screen. She goes away. So we've got dual wideband right here. We've got a flex fuel sensor and a boost gauge. So those are all wired up and working. So yeah, got it all back together. I uh, believe she's ready to rip. So we'll uh, fire it up in a little bit and and it's off to get dynoed. So we'll let you know what it makes. So with spraying the methanol, uh, we were still running out of fuel up top at around 750 horse range. So I believe that's pretty much going to be the limit of uh, running a dual nozzle meth kit with factory LT1 stock injectors. <clears throat> so basically where we're at right now is he's trying to find a set of LT4 injectors. I'll put the part number on the screen right now. So, um, if any of you guys are parts guys at a dealer and you may happen to have a set of these uh, locally, um, definitely let me know and I'll pass the information on to my customer. Um, but yeah, so we've already got an LT4 pump ready to go in it. Um, it does have a 30% larger cam lobe to overdrive the pump. So, you know, that's pretty much not enough. So we got the LT4 pump. We just need to come up with some LT4 injectors. That way he can run around on pump gas and um, hopefully not be burning up so much meth, at least at the boost level that the car is set at right now. And then also he'd be able to turn it up. So um, I appreciate you guys uh, helping me out. If you do have anything like that, let me know. And I uh, appreciate you guys watching. And I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, you enjoy the work that I do. I uh, put a lot of effort into it because I want it to be pretty much re very reliable and just last a long time. So, um, you know, that's where we're at with it. Um, you know, the LT stuff, man, is just crazy expensive. Um, you know, if you're looking at aftermarket injectors from like Lingenfelter, you're going to spend a few grand. Um, combine that with their high pressure pump. I mean, it's uh, it's crazy expensive, but... You know, you got to pay to play and i um, really happy how the car turned out and uh, can't wait to see what we end up doing with it next. So if you enjoyed it, leave a like. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe and um, we'll see you on the next one. Check out my son's whip. Oh. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> All right, you guys. See ya.